Welcome shooters and collectors to another exciting edition of Side by Side. Today we're going to be looking at the Pardini GT45. This one in particular is a 45. Uh, so that's the designation GT45. But they, all, they also come in a 9mm and I believe even a 40 Smith & Wesson. Um, we're sort of, I'm sort of doing this video backwards today because I want to show you how simplistic that the Pardini design is. It's a wonderful design. You really don't hear about it much and it, it to take it down and service the gun, clean it out, it, it's just a very easy thing to do. First we're going to start with the back strap. It's got ambidextrous safety, the injectors on it, and the sear and the hammer and the hammer spring of course. Um, there is a slight adjustment right here. You'll see a little, let's see if we can get that in focus. Maybe, maybe not. Um, it's a little cone-shaped screw, and the screw, you can screw it in, and it'll press against the sear, and you can uh, make an adjustment to it. And uh, But they say not to do that. I've never fooled with it, but it is possible to do if you wanted to try it. Reassembly of the gun, even though it's like, oh my gosh, you got the whole thing torn apart, is, is extremely easy. And I'm just going to go ahead, as I talk about the pistol, I'm going to just go ahead and do that. The... Uh, the frame is, once it's all taken apart, about the only thing left on the frame is the uh, two screws for the adjustment of the trigger and the, and the ambidextrous magazine release. Uh, the frame does have front checkering here and it has rear checkering on the uh, back strap. It looks kind of basic, but it functions very well. That one seems to be a little bit dirty. The uh, the frame is aluminum. They do make steel framed ones, but they are uh, very rare and very expensive. But the uh, the aluminum one, uh, I really like it. I like the weight distribution. It feels really good on it. So I'll just go ahead and show you how this goes back together. So basically, it just slides into the slots right there, and you have two pins. Pins go in. Just give them a little tap. First one. Second one, that's it. It's in. It's done. It's that easy. Next thing we'll be doing, perhaps I shouldn't have done that. Okay, next thing we'll be doing is the trigger. Here's the trigger right here. It's all one piece. Comes out very easily. Even goes in uh, just as easy. So all you have to do with this is you insert it here first. And then you get the trigger to go in. Now, when you, at this point, there, the spring on the inside needs to be pressed from this side of the um, frame. So you can use an Allen wrench or something that you have handy. And let's see if I can get an Allen wrench in there and press down on the spring. And I did. Pretty easy. Take the slide release. Get it past that little spring. That's it. Slide release is now in. Next thing you have to do is do the uh, takedown lever. Takedown lever, pretty easy. Oops, sorry, wrong side. Starts over here. Again, there's a spring there. You'll have to press it down. And to do that, you, again, you can just take your hex wrench, press it from the opposite side, get it going. In fact, actually, let me look at this. As I recall, there's a little notch here. I forgot about that. And I think you can just take this Maybe not. I thought you could maybe, oh, there we go. I had to press down on the block. You can just take that twist and it goes right in. Frames back together. It's literally that easy. I'll go ahead and put the uh, grips on. The grips are pretty thin, very, very thin actually. And um, you'll hear a lot of talk of the grip itself. The grip is a very thick grip. A lot of people just actually put uh, like skater tape on this and they take the grips off just to make it as thin as possible because they have smaller hands. For me with large hands it really isn't an issue, but um, it is a, a, a good alternative to do. The screws for the grip onto the frame really only take about a turn and a half. They're, they're pretty shallow. That's that side. And then we'll go ahead and put this side on. And then the 
frame will be completely done. That's it. It's back together. That is extremely simple. And it works. Just like that. Uh, this is a magazine. I believe it holds 15 rounds of 45. Very expensive. And just so you know, anything on the Pardini, any accessory you get is extremely expensive. You're going to pay two, two and a half to three times what you'd probably find on a more common firearm. The slide itself, again, very simple. You see the extractor there, it's on a spring. There is no firing pin block. Uh, this is the six inch version. The barrel doesn't look, you know, uh, sometimes you see barrels that are all chromed, very polished, very fine looking. Uh, surprisingly, the Pardini isn't like that, but it, of course they do focus on the crown itself right there. The cr uh, it's cut to perfection. Um, Put that in, it has a full length guide rod. Put that in. And then we can just put this right back on the frame. You do have to push the button in to get the take, lever, take down lever to go down. And then, let's see here. That's it. Back together. Uh, I'll show you the trigger. Trigger is uh, really nice, of course, obviously. There's your wall. There's a bit more take up than some other pistols I've uh, played with recently, but there's your wall. And then a little bit of creep. A little bit of creep. There we go, that, that, that's probably a better pull for you. And then, not that it matters too much on these pistols, but I'll show you the reset. There's your reset right there. Overall, these uh, if you're looking for a really nice target, uh, 9mm 40, Pardini's are tough to beat. They really are. The one thing that you will um, have to take into account, besides a, a wide grip, is the grip angle. It's totally, it's cut differently than say a 1911 that you're used to. So with me, I can take a 1911, close my eyes, point the gun, open my eyes, and the sights are actually lined up perfectly. It, it just fits me great. With this, if I did that, the gun would actually be like that. It, it, uh, it would be at an angle pointing upwards. Uh, other than that, like I said, it's, it's, a, it's a really great gun. Easy, as you can tell, take apart, put back together. I had the uh, fiber optic sight put on it, and then I also had it drilled at the factory for the, the mount. And the mounts usually are for like a one inch red dot, but um, finally what I decided to do with it, have a little fun, do something differently, is I had the the railing removed. And by the way, this railing is not Picatinny standard. It is not. So if you wanted to say, put this red dot and mount it on the the, um, the mount here, yeah, you wouldn't be able to do it. So what I did is I had the railing part inside removed and then I had the base plate screwed to the um, mount and then I could put my red dot on it as you see it. And then the final thing looks like that. Let's see if I can get you. And it works really well. I really like it. It's very expensive to do though because this mount cost, I believe at the time, about $320. And then you feel awful that you're hogging out all the metal that you'll never be able to use again. But um, in the end, it was it was definitely worth it. You might want to consider it if you if you want a red dot such as like an RMR on, on it. it. This gun really deserves that. Um, or you could go ahead and, and put a tube on it, which is what typically most people do. But I, I wanted to go with the RMR instead. Thanks for watching my video. That's it. Uh, please like and subscribe. If you subscribe to me, I'll subscribe to you. Give you some incentive there. And uh, please leave comments, any uh, observations or anything. I'd like to see what other people are saying. Have a good day.